Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another stock analysis video. And today, guys, we're going to be taking a, a look at one of your recommendations in the form of Sinclair Company. Now, this one was brought up by Tony Myers a while ago. This, is, this has been from like several, several days, um, not several weeks, but finally getting to it. And pretty soon, guys, we're going to be done with this. That's not a cube asking for recommendations. Let me at least get to a cube, which is recommended by KLL, and then you guys can start recommending again. But for now, guys, let's take a look at Sinclair Broadcasting Group. Check out the fundamentals. Go over their earnings summary, and I will leave their earnings report in the description below, but I'm not going to go over it, just their summary. Look at their fundamentals on the five-year, and then make a determination of whether or not this company is a buy at the current moment. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. So the first thing that I would like to take a look at this company it is what they do because I personally have no idea. Sinclair Broadcast Group Inc. operates as a media company in the United States. The company broadcasts free over the air programming such as network provided programs, locally produced news, local sporting events, programming from the program service arrangements, syndicated entertainment programs, internally originated programming, and programming to television viewing audiences in the communities through its local television stations. So, okay. They are essentially the broadcasting company for local for local kind of programs. Okay, that's very, very simple. So you pretty much know that during COVID, they probably did really good, right? Most likely they did, seeing that people were stuck at home watching watching stuff. So that might be something that we might see. Coming into now their earnings summary. This is on Seeking Alpha and we can see that they had earnings on the 22nd of February of this year. EPS normalized actual came in at 83 cents, beat by 35 cents. EPS gap actual, 79 cents, beat by 51 cents. Revenue, $960 million, which was a miss by $20.34 million. So now let's jump into the calculator. We got the ticker symbol for SBGI, market cap of $1.1 billion, a P of 0.42 with a current share price of $15.68. Guys, this PE is telling me that this thing is super, super cheap. And in fact, taking a look at this on the one year, they are down 46.56% year to date. They're up, barely up though, 2.35%. You can see that their peak was right here at $21.84 on February 2nd, so about a month ago. And looking at the 52 week range, they were $14.37 at the lowest to $29.47 at the highest. So looking at this current share price of $15.68, yeah, guys, this is a 52 week low company. Pretty much, right? Essentially, pretty much, this is at 52 week lows. It might present itself as a really good buying opportunity. They do pay out a dividend of a dollar, which is a massive yield of 6.38%, a payout ratio super tiny, 2.75%. Five-year CAGR of 6.79%, one consecutive year of dividend payment. However, I do want to take a look at that a little bit further because they have might have just cut it. Actually, no, they did not. Taking a look at this, guys, it said that they cut it. It's just that pretty much as soon as 2020 hit, they never increased their dividend because you know, obvious reasons, right? COVID hit. So that's the reason why they didn't increase their dividend during 2020. But they increased it, you know, two years later. They did, they did not increase it during 2021. They waited up until 2022. But nonetheless, though, it's not the fact that they cut it. It's just that they just didn't increase it. So that's a little bit better than to see it, you know, being cut. So, you know, yeah, sure. One consecutive year isn't amazing, but it's not because they cut it. Ex dividend date, I'm so, so terribly sorry, but ex dividend date passed as of March 2nd. Now, the reason I'm saying sorry is because, well, it's March 5th. Payout date is going to be on the 17th of March and they pay their dividends quarterly. Based on their current shares outstanding and this dollar dividend, this means that they pay out $69.6 million in dividends every single year. And based off of their five year average free cash flow, this is $657.2 million that they still have left. And as of their last year's free cash flow, it is $624.4 million. These payout ratios are still really, really small. 10.03% for the last year's free cash flow and 9.6% for the five-year average. So they can continue to increase this if they so wish to do so. And now taking a 
look at their fundamentals, starting with their net income. And uh, I'm fortunate to say this is not looking good. Five years ago, $341 million to one year ago of $2.65 billion, increase of 678%. Even though this is an increase, guys, you can see that, you know, from five to four years ago, they went down to $47 million. Three years ago is perfectly understandable, or is it, right? Because I mean, they are a broadcasting company. Yet three years ago when COVID hit, they did negative $2.4 billion. That's kind of concerning, right? Seeing that everybody was at home, people were watching TV, or maybe they weren't. Maybe they were probably just on the internet. That's also a big, big thing with this company. They're broadcasting. A lot more people are not watching TV anymore. At least the younger generation, they're mainly on the internet. So that's, that's a big, big problem right there. Nonetheless, though, they did go down during COVID. I'm going to leave it as a COVID issue. I'm going to say it's okay. I'm going to ignore it. And you can see that even two years ago, they recovered, but they didn't go back into the positive. Only one year ago is when they went up into the positive $2.65 billion. Now I'm giving this a 25%. Obviously, I'm ignoring three and two year ago number. The reason why I'm giving this a 25 is because, well, first of all, they fell from five to four years ago. But take a look at this, ignoring the three and two years ago value, guys, this is still a massive jump overall from several hundred million dollars to 2.65 billion that's a massive jump so that's why i'm giving this a 25 percent looking out at the free cash flow this one makes a lot more sense in regards to covid we got five years ago of 542 million dollars to one year ago of 694 million dollars is an increase of 28 percent with an average of 728.8 million dollars now you can see here from five to four to three years ago consistent increase a big jump from four to three years ago but then again perfectly understandable because of again covid but then two years ago, they went down from 1.4 billion three years ago to 247 million. And then after that, they brought it back up one year ago to 694. So you can see this pretty much all over the place. At least it is not in the negatives. So for this reason, I'm giving this a 40%. Looking now at the revenue. This one makes the most sense out of all of them, except for for some reason one year ago. Five years ago of $3.1 billion to one year ago of almost $4 billion, increase of 28.58%. Now you can see a pretty good increase from five to four to three to two years ago. And by pretty good increase, I also mean consistent increase as well. However, what is kind of concerning is why did they go down from two to one year ago? That's, that's just concerning right there. Maybe they have something in their earnings report. Again, I will link that in the description below. I'm not going to go over it, but you guys can read it for yourselves in the description below if you so wish to do so. But for this reason, the fact that this dropped from 6.134 billion two years ago to four billion dollars one year ago because of that reason i'm giving this guys a 60 percent look at now the total assets minus the total liabilities this one is concerning because you can see three and two years ago they were in the negatives obviously three years ago is understandable and so is two years ago but you would expect that two years ago would be less of a negative than three years ago and it isn't that's just actually more negative 1.51 billion dollars that's concerning. Now they did recover one year ago in the positive to 875 million, but it's just not enough of a recovery for me to feel comfortable about that. So that's the reason why I'm giving this opinion. Now, average total assets, it is $11.34 billion. Average liabilities is almost $11 billion. I'm doing this difference, we get $403.6 million. I'm giving this a 45%. Looking at the cash flow minus the liabilities, this one's actually looking kind of interesting mainly because they've had instances where they have brought it back like from four to three years ago from negative 13.84 billion dollars to negative 12.98 billion dollars you're sure that is a little bit of an increase but then they came back down two years ago and then massive massive jump from negative 13.8 billion dollars to negative five billion dollars so pretty much rivaling what it was five years ago that's actually really really good overall average cash flow minus the average total liabilities we get negative 10 billion dollars i'm actually going to give this a 60 percent it's not like very consistent but it does have potential seeing that they did bring this down a significant amount one year ago especially seeing that their free cash flow actually came down from their peak three years ago basically this is telling me that they are lowering their liabilities so that's why again guys i'm giving this a 60 percent and now for the shares outstanding this one i was not expecting this guys this is a massive massive share buyback we got five years ago of 94.6 million shares to today of 69.6 million shares again 
That is a massive buyback of 26.43% on the five year. And on the previous to the current year, this is looking at two years ago, 73.1 million shares to 69.6 .6 million shares. That is a decrease of almost 5% in just one year. For this reason, guys, the fact that they've never issued shares one time, even during COVID, I'm putting this at a 100%. And lastly, when it comes to the cash and equivalents, they currently hold $884 million with an average of $1.04 billion. And now for the overall grade, we give the net income 25%, free cash flow 40%, revenue 60%, assets minus liabilities 45%, cash flow minus liabilities 60%, and the shares outstanding of 100%, overall grade of 53%. The biggest problem I have here, guys, is the cash flow and the net income. That's mainly it. Also a little bit of their assets minus liabilities, but I think their liabilities are fine seeing the cash flow minus the liability. So I think the main problem guys is the net income and the free cash flow. If they were to actually get this somewhat consistent, this would be easily 70%. It does have potential, but then again, this is also a 52 week low company. So let's actually see if at the current share price, being 52 week lows, is this a good price? So now let's come into the discounted free cash flow. Let's make low, median, and high assumptions. I'm gonna say, guys, revenue of one, two, and three percent for the low, median, and high. Now, coming over here to Seeking Alpha, this is where I'm a little bit torn because they have the revenue forward at negative 16.22 percent. I don't think that that will happen so i'm gonna go with as i said one two and three percent i'm gonna change this after we do this to see what we actually get if we were to put in the negatives now for the projected share buyback they did 26 percent guys massive in the past five years i'm going to go a little bit more conservative i'm gonna go five seven and nine percent in the next five years okay so with a recovery rate of return of ten percent this puts me not adjusting for deck guys between $102.72 to $114.85. That's massive. And then a target share price adjusting for debt. Fortunately, this does come down because of the fact that they actually have a lot more debt than they do cash on hand. This is now $62.31 to $72.76. With a margin of safety of 5, 10, 15%, this is between almost $53 to $69.12. Guys, in every single scenario over here, every single one of them, this is looking like a straight up buy with a current share price of $15.68. And on top of that, even the PE says it, 0 0.42, that's super, super small. So yeah, I do kind of see it that this should be worth it around like, hundred bucks maybe maybe around like eighty dollars eighty five ninety if this thing you know kind of makes sense depending on obviously depending on what revenue things you put over here so again everything just depends as to what you put that's why there's not financial advice every investment is the present value of all future cash flow please have these calculators they're all available for free link is in the description below all i'm asking for in return guys is just like subscribe comment it really does help her with the algorithm on youtube now I actually want to change this to something representing to what Seeking Alpha is actually saying at negative 16.22. So I'm not going to put negative 16. I'm going to go along the lines of like negative 12 for the revenue for the low assumption. Let's go with negative 10 and then let's go with negative 8. Now with this, we still get a massive share price, $63.09 to $76.77 not adjusting for debt. Adjusting for debt though, we are getting closer and closer to this current share price, $22.68 to $34.68. And with a margin of safety of five, 10, 50%, $19.28 to almost $33. So even still, this is looking like a buy. However, you know, I do not want to have negative revenue growth, man. I, I really, really don't. That's not what you buy a company for. It's still worth something, but you know, you want a company to be making money, not losing money. So obviously things could change on a dime when it comes to this. I have not read their earnings report. Maybe the earnings report say something. Please let me know in the comment section below, Tony or anybody else that may be interested in this. But from looking at this from like a 5,000 foot view, yeah, this is, is still looking like a buy even with a negative 12 revenue growth projection. Again, guys, all of this is my opinion. None of this is financial advice. Please have these calculators and make your own assumption because if you think that this they're going to actually do negative 16 or worse, negative 20, you guys can input all of these numbers and all of this will essentially be calculated, okay? So again, just please make your own assumptions. Just remember that this is not financial advice. 
So now let's come into this dividend because a dollar in annual dividends is not a lot. However, it is still a massive yield, six plus percent. Putting in $5,725, this nets you an annual dividends, guys, of $365.13. That's huge. I normally like 210, 215 for $5,725. 365. Imagine raising your income, right? Your yearly income by $365 without doing anything. That is absolutely insane. So that's actually looking good. And by the looks of it, their dividend still is somewhat sustainable. Their payout ratio is low. And even though they don't have a lot of consecutive years under their belt, it's because they didn't cut the dividend. It was because they just didn't increase it during COVID. But aside from that, it's still looking really, really solid. And now coming over here into the options change, which by the way, I'm so sorry, I forgot to do it for the for the last stock analysis video I did. So terribly sorry for that one. I'm not going to forget. It's just that changing it up, like, you know, you forget sometimes. So taking a look at the options change, guys. First thing I have to note is that they really don't have a lot of liquidity. They only have March, April, June, and September options months. That's about it. Maybe more will come as time passes, but that's not really a lot of liquidity for starters. The second thing is, is that looking at the March 17th, 2023 guys we can see that there really isn't much volume on this either the only one if you're wanting to sell a put that you can sell a put and that actually has volume it is the strike price of $15 which again current share price $15.68 that is a little bit close but $15 you would only have to put down $1,500 to get 100 shares of this now coming over here into the call side we can see that there is a lot more liquidity actually and this might actually serve as a really, really good opportunity to do the option wheel if you so wish to do so. So you can see that on the call side for March 17th, you could sell a call for a strike of $16 for a pretty good decent premium of $30. And on top of that, you also have liquidity at the $17 strike and even all the way up to the $22 strike. Now, you won't get any premiums for this. The bid is $0.00. But let's just say that you do end up selling a put for $15 over here. Well, if the strike actually executes, then you only pay $1,500 to buy 100 shares. Now you can turn around and you can start selling call options, guys, at the $16 $17 or even a $22 mark. If you believe that this company will actually go up and you don't mind getting your shares taken away from you, you can make that difference very, very easily, honestly. Like in my personal opinion, obviously if your shares are being taken away, if you do not care about that dividend, you will get around a $2 difference per share if you were to sell a call and it does execute at the $17 mark, or if not, $22, that's even better. Now looking at the April for the exact same thing, we can see that there is liquidity here at $15 and the options premium is actually a lot. $50 if you were to sell this option premium. No, nothing else over here has volume. And now, however, from the call side for the April expiration, there really is no volume here, guys. You wouldn't be able to sell anything on this. So you would just stay with the March one for the best kind of scenario if you wanted to do the option wheel strategy. All in all, when it comes to Sinclair, thank you so much for the recommendation. Their dividends looking good. They can 100% afford it. The problem is, is that their fundamentals just aren't there for me. Like the net income, the free cash flow just could be a lot better. On top of that, you also have to take into account all com competitors, right? They are a broadcasting company, meaning that if more and more people are going into the internet, unless they're able to, to do the switch, they probably will go out of business i don't i don't want to say that they will i'm just saying that they could so just be on the lookout for that that's something that you have to take into account anyways that pretty much is it for this video like if you like comment subscribe it really does help with the algorithm on youtube you guys can follow us on the new tech sites link in the description below so with that said peace out and we'll see you all in the next stock analysis a video